Welcome to Game Pass News recorded live Thursday, September 8th. I'm Nintendo. One half of one half of, one half of the awesome GPN showcase. And the man next to me here is Sean Abbott. He's the other half of the most awesome GPN showcase. Uh, and he's right over there across the pond in the good old UK. Today we are gonna be talking about why. Sony's crying about a generous offer for three years of COD. Just go play your game, Sony, okay? What the heck is going on over here? All right? We're going to be... There is a controller. An amazing controller. Elite 2 in Design Labs. And guess what? Here's a novel idea, Sony. You could lower the price, like Xbox just did, on the Elite 2 to make it cheaper. That's an amazing idea. I'm a little salty today about this, people. I'm not going to lie. And there's all kinds of stuff on Game Pass. There's an amazing game on Game Pass, which I thought was going to be good, and then I thought it wasn't, but now it is. But let's just get into the show. which has been through for the last section of that intro i know i know i was listen i'm i'm a little salty i'm a little excited i don't even know what's going on you know i can't i can't even keep up uh but uh how how was uh how's life over there and the, well i'm sorry for your guys's loss first off um that, yeah, that affects yeah, we, everybody we, we, so. we've uh, a, a moment silence for the uh the anarchy of the uk yeah the queen died today um 70 years 70 70 years is rolling you know she's 96 years old she she a long run the yeah. longest running monarch so yeah she was yeah. she's a legend we, i mean no no doubt i mean every, everywhere like we're it is felt worldwide for sure so 100 yeah. percent. and now we have a king so you know for the whole entire time of my uh, childhood while i was in high school we were doing history and world we'll king henry and so far you know like I never thought I would live under the rule of a king, and here we are. Now mm -hmm. we're living under the rule of a king. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is. Uh, so yeah, definitely sorry for that. Uh, but but, but, but uh, what about? Go ahead. Other than that, it's great. The kids have gone back to school. Jay, Jay, Jay was the last one to return back to normal today. She went to she, she went and did all her inductions in college today. She got timetable. So super happy for that because it means I get my peace and quiet back during the day, so I can mm. play that game that you did like didn't like did like now think is awesome mm -hmm. yep that's so. the game that's the game how did you know um yeah yeah my kids are back to school too and i'm i'm very excited for that and actually you know what's great so are they like you know i love that i love that they're actually they're like they were super pumped to go back to school um so so yeah um that that excites me i will say uh sometime over the weekend or early or late last week i got poison ivy um, so that is, that's been, uh, an itchy situation. Very, yeah, very unfun. Um, but it was, it started to like spread all over. So I went to the doctor and, uh, he's like, yeah, he's like, well, it was on my eye. And so he's like, yeah, we don't want that to get any worse. So he's like, so we're going to give you a shot. They shot me with this prednisone. I don't know. Some steroid thing in the box, Sean. In the butt, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, 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 so over the weekend, you took a small prick in the bum. I did. I did. Here's the funny part, though. Like, I get, I get shot in the butt, and and it's like, oh, I didn't even feel it. Like nothing. And so that's it. I walk out of the doctor's office. I make a right hand turn, and I swear, I don't know what happened. It felt like somebody stabbed me with a steak knife in the butt, <laughs> like out of nowhere. I was just like, I was like, all of a sudden, I'm like barely walking, hobbling. I'm like, I do, I do not understand. I did not hardly at all feel the prick or nothing like that. But man, like 10 minutes later, that, that son of a gun, that like, whoo, that really hurt. I don't know what it was. I don't know how, it, I don't know how it works, but. Man, let me tell you, but I'm doing better now. Poison Ivy's a little bit better, so it's you know. But if you see me itching, yeah, and, you, that's and it. you sat and you and you sat down looking comfortable, so you know the old tush might oh, be all right. When I was driving home, I was doing like one of these, you know. Like, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, that's enough about that's enough about that. But seriously, that that man, that, that I really felt that one. Um. So yeah, but that's uh, life over here. Kids are in school, and I have poison ivy, and I got pricked in the bum. That's true. Uh, yep. Anything else from the, you? The, the only other thing is I waved bye to my car. My car finally got oh, collected yeah. today. So, 
So um, I actually I, like I watched back to the house as the guy we drove it onto the back of the um, the low loader and I, like was welling up. I was almost crying. And I text Lindsay to say, "Is it okay to be like almost crying about my cargo?" Like, so I mean, it's, it's, that that thing's seen two kids from birth to mm-hmm. what they are now, and then Jaya from eight to college. So sixteen years, sixteen years I've had that car. Mm-hmm. So, I had my Saturn for 14. And that was a sad day when we when we got rid of her too. Um, so yeah, I I do totally 100 percent It is okay to cry about your car. 100 percent um, it's, it, it's not the car, it's the memories that come with the car. Right. That's the bit that I'm sad about. Yeah. So like every time I got in it, it was always like I could be driving it along and a song would come on and I'd be like, Oh yeah, this song came on while well, such and such. So yeah, yeah. that's now gone. Yeah. Yeah, I no, I I think that that makes total sense to me. Like I, I totally get it. Uh, SDK, thanks for joining. No, we we well, I don't know. We got chatty pre-show, so yeah, we're <laughs> we're a little bit late. We were we were chatting about stuff, and so yeah, it's a little bit later. But hey, it works out for us because it works out for you. So we're glad you're here, SDK. Um, so Sean, why don't you uh, why don't you tell us about some events that's going on? Because like so- we don't have much time. For one of them. Yeah. So, so before we get into all the news and the top stories, we have um, a competition going at the moment. Well, not like, like a giveaway. We have, we have a giveaway. It's not a competition. You don't mm-hmm. have to compete for it. It's just a giveaway. Well, we did a shot nearly two weeks back now, I believe, um, mm-hmm. over on YouTube. And we pinned it to the top of our Twitter page. You can see it there too. Um, and we're giving away three months of free Game Pass. So all you need to do is comment in that and on the date that is mentioned in the video, uh, you can, we will be releasing a name at random and you'll be getting a code for three months of free Game Pass. For months, because we love you all so much. We do. We do. It's our thank you for putting up with us, basically, and listening to our show, <laughs> for being so awesome. Somewhere in between there, all those things, we thank you. So, yeah, and uh, I think next week, right, we will have an announcement for a new new grant uh, Achievement Hunter. We will. Um, I, we, we are still to discuss the game, but I have a feeling I know which game it might be. So that's true. Um, yeah. So so keep your your ears or eyes or whatever peeled for that. It'll always be on Twitter. But yep, pin tweet and you can uh, comment there, and you might win three months of Game Pass. Rolling right into our top stories. Um, apparently, I don't know. Apparently my printer had a seizure, so I'm not sure what happened there. Um, that was fun. <laughs> there was not a gunfight going on in my basement. I promise. Even Maybe we should excite you for the top stories. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> High quality. High quality. Um, all right. Shut, shut printer off. I need to add that to my thing. Top stories. Anyways, family plan. Family Plan is out in Ireland and Colombia, and why the hell not the UK and the US? That's what I want to know. Come on, people. Uh, um, I'm going to go with small markets. Yeah, yeah. I, I um, did it. Yeah, well, well, basically, it's a... I wouldn't say... Yeah, I'm going to go as far as say it's probably an alpha test in a small market. See how many people grab it. See how the uh, the infrastructure and the, the framework of everything works. Um. And just to see how people, how it's accepted. I'm hoping, because, you know, we we had a retweet from Xbox Game Pass that they might actually listen to this and go, hey, look, Nick and Sean have talked about the family plan and how excited everybody is for it. So let's let's release it in the UK and the US and just go. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. When, when we got a comment from Xbox Game Pass on our Twitter, I was like, I could not tell you how excited I was. I was like, oh, my God, they saw us. They saw us, Sean. I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Ah, highlight of my week, probably right there. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, so pretty yeah, cool. This, the, the, the family plan price is in at twenty one ninety nine euros, mm-hmm. um, which equates to about eighteen, to like eighteen ninety nine pounds sterling, or twenty one ninety nine dollars. Because mm-hmm. you know the the, do- the dollar euro euro uh, exchange rate is pretty rubbish at the moment. Um, so. Yeah, I, I have a feeling this is going to end up being fixed everywhere. I think twenty one ninety nine, twenty two pound a month 
is going to be fixed. Yep. I don't know the full ins and outs on this. I don't know if it's you know how many different accounts you can have. It's kind of like there's it's all. Didn't wasn't was didn't we learn that it was four accounts? Why do I thought why why did I think we knew that? You got four See, I accounts. Don't know. I, thought, I, I, I thought that was what we just hoped. Well, if I hope it, Sean, then that's then that's what it's gonna be. Um, man, no, I really thought I really thought we knew that. Now I'm all now I'm all confused. I thought I knew something, and now I don't know if I do. Um, gal, gal, darn it! And why was that the one thing I didn't link to? Because I thought I knew yeah. it. That's why. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, I know this. I'm good. Uh, it thought... is add up to far friends and family members. Okay, yeah. Whether they l- live under the same roof or not, each person uses their own account and Xbox profile to save their games, track their achievements, and achieve personalized recommendations. Boom. So yeah. All right. Cool. Um. Yeah. So for the, I mean, that's a great deal. That is a steal. Yeah. Like, oh it's, my gosh. It's, it's double your monthly allowance. Monthly, it's, for me, it's double the the monthly amount I am paying now. But I can share it with my dad, my brother, Jaya, and myself. Yeah, I mean, there's it's it's great. It's perfect. The only thing they need to do if they release that, and then you know, may maybe if we're lucky, sometime holiday we get like the the little puck thing, dude. I. I am in like I will yeah. buy that little puck thing and and the whole family can have their own account on it. Oh, my gosh. Let's go. Like, that's that's what I want. That's what I want. Xbox. Just give me that. Give me family plan. Give me puck. We're good. Everybody yeah. could be playing Disney Dreamlight right now. Not that I think that game's really awesome or anything. Or I'm going to say that later on. But I mean, if if we liked it, <laughs> everybody could be playing that. Um, yeah. And and that is a it's a, that. That they are missing a trick with that, not releasing the family plan and Disney Dreamlight Valley at the same time. For me, was yes. a big error for them because seriously, it's it is the perfect game to to be playing this as a collective. I mean, it's not. There's no. Is there a multiplayer? <laughs> I was gonna look this up and I did not. I don't know if there's or not. There certainly should be. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. For what I've played, I haven't seen it yet. But yeah, it would have made sense to for for me to be able to visit your village, or in your case, if everybody was playing it all together via the pup in the family plan, you could visit each of us villages and kind of do all the things that you'd like to do together. But Sean, I have to have a side. I have to have a sidebar right now. Okay, for listeners and everybody, right now, I'm suffering down here. The cat box is like around the corner, probably 20 feet from me, and that fricker took a shit, <laughs> and it smells so bad down here. <laughs> like, it, I don't know what that cat's been eating, but, oh my lord, it is horrible down here right now. I think this is like a first in in podcasting for me, but, whew, I'm suffering, people. I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna stick through it, but, wow. Man, it is. It is. You had a really bad week. <laughs> it's not smelling. It's not smelling good down here. Let me tell you that. Okay. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, if my eyes start to water or something, you'll uh, you'll know why. Uh, I'm trying to find I mean, out I, to confirm. I have the game. Time. I have the game up in front of me right now, and I can't see. Does not have any multiplayer features. No, I can't see anything. That's lame. Now I don't like it anymore. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, mo- okay, so uh, mo- moving on. Um, family plans coming sometime soon. Man, when they... Do you think... So they... Ha- well, m- rolling in. We'll just roll right in. We'll call it a segue. Then it's a new thing we do around here. Um, we have two presentations coming up. Xbox ID, nine four, uh, September 14th, 2022. 1 p.m. Eastern, about 90 minutes of... of uh, normally indie stuff. It probably isn't going to be anything about family plans and that. That wouldn't make much sense. Um, but then the the legit next day, nine fifteen, Xbox Stream is back for the Tokyo Game Show. Do you think they would roll out family plans then? I mean, it doesn't um, seem real, but may, maybe I don't know. I don't. I don't think so. But it would be cool if they did. See, it, it would be a great market. They are wanting to be really big in in Japan and the Western. I guess we never reach the the Eastern side of things, not the Western. We are Western. 
um, <laughs> they cross my geography. But, you know, they, they are wanting to be really big in the eastern eastern market at the moment. So I think that would be a great thing to drop, as well as a nice big juicy game that's kind of mm-hmm. you know, no longer an exclusive for uh, for the the blue team. Because mm-hmm. um, you know we're not mentioning names. No. Uh, no. But yeah, I think <laughs> the family plan and news about that game at the same time in Tokyo would would be a very very good idea i i yeah because watch him just be, watch it just be japan though i'll be like their next role i'll be like family plans I, in japan I, now and we'll be like screw you no i'd be fine with that that is a really it's a good way for them to get into that market it's a way of testing how the framework could how everything excuse me it's just like 10 to midnight here. It's a great way of how everything would be to in a large environment. So, because obviously Japan, Tokyo is a huge place just for the density of the population. Um, so it would be a really good test for the servers and the framework and the infrastructure of how everything would work. So I'd, I'd be happy if it was just Tokyo because then they've tried something small, they're going something a little bit bigger. And then I reckon holidays like end of november that's when we're going to see like the general rollout or at mm-hmm. least uh xbox insiders style rollout across you know the, oh, the old yeah. beta team yeah mm-hmm. so. you're probably right they'll probably go there first if they're going to go if they're going to go all in um yeah yeah i yeah i definitely think they need these family plans all rolled out um by november I would I would say something something in that time frame would would make a lot of sense. And if they can roll out the puck um, for Black Friday stuff, uh, that that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, But I don't know what kind of chips need to go in there. And, you know, they may not be pushing that because they might have a a production issue with with all of that stuff, too. So uh, I'm not really sure on that one. Uh, I don't know, but it could that could be a thing. Um, But, yeah, I would. I'm interested. The Xbox ID, you never have any idea what's going to be there. I don't think Deathloop at first. So 914 is a full year without um, for Deathloop, but it's not an ID game. It's a it's a first party game. So you think they're going to just unveil it at Tokyo Game Show then on the 15th? I, I yeah, I think Tokyo Game Show <laughs> is probably where it's more likely to to be released. I mean, yeah. it's a it's that style of game, so yeah, yeah. Um, big market, lots of excitement, lots of hype. Hey, we're over in Tokyo. We're we're hosting because Xbox mm-hmm. are hosting the stream. They're not streaming from Tokyo; is they're just hosting the Tokyo right. Game Show. So it would be great if, off the back of that, look, thanks for hosting us, and just to let you know, <laughs> right now, definitely go is available now. Yeah, yeah, that would. Uh... That would, what let, let me see if I can get a, t- a time here. 2 a.m. Pacific. So that would be 3 a. No, that would be 5 a.m. my time. 10 a.m. your time, I believe. Yeah, I'm going to say it's midnight now and Tokyo is 7 a.m. at the moment. So they're they're yeah. a good deal behind me. So that means I could wake up to a tweet about about uh, Death Loop available now. I'd take that. That'd be fun. You're ringing in sick for work. Hey, <laughs> I'm really like, uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't make it. Have a nice day. You're going to have to take the kids to school, honey. I'm busy. Real busy. Um, yeah, so we have uh, we have Xbox ID coming up on the 14th. Uh, Tokyo Game Show on the 15th. And uh, before both of those, the Ubisoft Forward this Saturday on September 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern. I meant to check that because that just seems crazy. Is that really when the Ubisoft Forward is? 9 p.m.? Yeah, which is on a Saturday is pretty good because it means everybody can have a, like the whole family day over and done with and people are yeah. settling down for the evening. So you're going to get a lot of people watching it. No, no, that is not the right time. No, Ubisoft Forward will be held on Saturday, September 10th at 3 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm 
I got that. Some I wrote that wrong in the in the chart apparently, or or I got it from a bad source. Well, that's good then, because that means that as 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 as, as, as that starts, I'll literally be probably having my second cup of tea at work. So there you go. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> so we're definitely going to get some more skull and bones. Uh, the big thing is the announcement for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they say about that. There's supposed to be some other Assassin's Creed announcements as well. So, yeah, I mean, man, this give, is like... Give me, a, some, give me some more Prince of Persia. I yeah. like me a bit of Prince of Persia. Yeah, that would be great. Um, yeah, you could. we could see a lot of stuff here. But, but the point is, this week is jam-packed with presentations. I mean, Saturday... And then when is the 14th? So we got Saturday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We have we have presentations. Two of them specifically Xbox, one of them Ubisoft, which will certainly be certainly have some Xbox stuff, no doubt about it. And then if you potentially chuck in the rumored Tuesday Nintendo direct. Whoa. Everybody seems to be rumoring and excited for it. It's gonna be the next like seven days is going to be pretty hectic seriously this is like the september e3 if that actually happened um so on tuesday yeah maybe they do like to do like they're not giving you a lot of a lot of lead time on these directs anymore i don't think they want to like let the hype go train go too far too fast um Uh, it's it's not it's also like if they don't tell people about a direct there's less likely that things can get leaked so yeah yeah, that too. Yeah, for sure. All right, people. Now, here's my saltiness. <laughs> Next topic. Mr. Jim Ryan is complaining that uh, he is not getting that, that they are not getting a generous enough offer for Call of Duty. Now, Phil and the Xbox crew have said, listen, you can have this game for an extra three years past your current contract. So I think they're already two years out, I believe, um, with Activision contract. So they're saying they get five years. And uh, Mr. Jim Ryan says, <clears throat> Microsoft has only offered for Call of Duty to remain on PlayStation for three years after the current agreement between Activision and Sony ends. For almost 20 years of Call of Duty on PlayStation, after almost 20 years of Call of Duty on PlayStation, their proposal was inadequate on many levels and failed to take account of the impact on our gamers. Well, boo freaking who, Jim. All right, that's all I got to say. Like, give I, me I'm, a break. I, I'm not being funny, but the, the, it's not like Microsoft had turned around and said, you're just not having the game at all, Jim. Fuck yeah, that, Jim. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's I, literally that they're just saying you, you've lost your exclusive, like, exclusivity rights. That's it. I, the game will probably come out at the same time on Sony as it does with Xbox. Apart from people who have Game Pass could possibly get this game day in day with a subscription service. But your gamers are going to have to buy it. Yeah. Sure, Jim. <laughs> yeah, I, I do Please. not understand this. At all. I mean, Sony sounds like such a little brat. I mean, they're like, listen... You know, what was it like two weeks ago? They're like, listen, yeah, it's we're running. We don't we're not making enough money. So we have to raise the rates on our on all of our two year old consoles that nobody can find anyway. So let me charge more because we are having a hard time. Of course, you as gamers and regular civilians and consumers are rolling in dough to pay extra cash for our already overly priced console, please. So then they raise their break rates so that you know you can fund them and and now what they're crying over over this deal uh i I mean personally i get it i think jim's just trying to make a fuss right now especially since they got a little ball rolling we'll kind of just jump to the acquisition watch they got a little ball rolling because the uk sean i don't mean to blame it on you sean (laughs) has a concern about the acquisition so sean said Ah, uh, they wanted to look into it a little bit more. No, I'm sorry. The the U I don't know the UK committee, whoever that is. Um, so yeah, the uh, the tell me who these people are, okay. Sean. These I people. They I think the initials for it is the CMA, I believe. Um, Country uh, Music worried. Awards. Yeah, <laughs> I've uh, they're saying that basically the word that they haven't got enough information or enough evidence that Microsoft aren't going to kind of monopolize 
um, like things like Call of Duty and stuff like that. So in phase one, they're, they're waiting to complete phase one of the investigation, which is where they're asking Microsoft for more information and more details on this. Um, if they get that kind of information and those details, then they'll be really ha- they'll be happy to stop the investigation at that point and then deliberate and go far from there. If they don't, then they'll go into phase two, which means they go into an in- a more in depth investigation into the facts and figures behind everything. So, yeah, and so I think Jim's just tossing a fit to try to add some fire to this whole like this whole concerns from the UK committee, um, because. Either that or he really is just a baby. I mean, I'm sorry. I- I'm sorry. I don't understand this at all. This makes this is like the worst business shtick I have seen in a ver- in in a long. It doesn't make any sense um, to me. Uh, your competitor is trying to buy an org is trying to buy another company. You got three extra years. Congratulations. Like I don't. That's that. That's it. That that's the end of the deal. Yeah. And- and that is three years is is quite a, a long period of time. Yeah, and so I mean I get it. He's worried. He's worried that he that they're going to lose all rights to it at that point. And to be honest, not being a Call of Duty guy, okay. I mean to just be real, like legit. I, I have said that that the acquisition of of Activision Blizzard. Um, is probably pretty low on my like list of wanted acquisitions, to be honest. But that doesn't mean I don't understand that it's a huge, it's a huge acquisition, both monetarily and uh, for for many many gamers in uh, uh, in the Xbox PlayStation sphere. So they don't want to lose, they don't want to lose exclusivity. Phil Spencer has said he doesn't want that to happen either. He has no plans for that. But I mean, I get it. Looking at what they are doing with Bethesda doesn't give people a lot of comfort, for sure. I mean, Bethesda's not, you know, Bethesda's exclusive at this point. So, I don't know. Yeah. So, to just very quickly recapping on that. So, reading from the BBC News article, which is like the main source for UK news, um, it's the Competition and Markets Authority, which is CMA. I did well to remember the initials. Um, it just says it's got concerns around the the like uh, da, 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 the concerns concerns where is it i've just read it uh it's really in the cma said that it's concerned that if microsoft bought activision blizzard it could harm rivals by refusing them access to activision blizzard games or providing access on much worse terms sounds about right so uh, yeah and it's sasha o'carroll senior director of mergers at the CMA he said Microsoft could use its control over popular games like Call of Duty and World of Warcraft post-merger to harm its rivals. If our current concerns are not addressed, we plan to explore this deal in an in-depth phase two investigation to reach a decision that works in the interests of the UK gamers and businesses. Um, responding to that, I, I believe Phil Spencer mentioned to Bloomberg that they have more of a mobile motive for this purchase um, saying that the biggest gaming platform on the planet right now is mobile phones, which is an area in which Microsoft has lacked expertise, which is probably why they're wanting to get hold of the founders of Candy Crush, who mm-hmm. is... I can't remember. Yeah, but, I can't either. Um, oh, it's King, isn't it? King's the... King, yeah, yep, yep, yep you got it. I was looking at that. So if, the, if there's a mobile kind of like wanting to get into the mobile market a little bit. Um, I can understand why they're wanting King because people absolutely adore Candy Crush. The other big major mobile developer for me would be next to Apple. Uh, would be Supercell, the guys behind mm-hmm. Crush of Clans and yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean, if if it doesn't go through for that kind of issue, I can see them in future probably if they want to chase down the mobile market going towards somebody like supercell but i can't see this not getting through microsoft are going to be pretty clear with their intentions regarding um the first party games that come from activision and blizzard because i don't over other than saying okay that we're we're not going to have exclusive rights but we're also not going to allow anybody else to have exclusive rights to stuff 
I don't understand how that's going to harm the success of that game or the success of a console in the market using those games. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, I they're they're concerned about how it's going to harm gamers access to these to these games uh since it's such such a popular since it's such a popular game um but they i don't i don't understand what i and of course jim ryan's gonna jump on this too right so now um they're trying he's trying to bring light to this to add more fuss to to this so that the CMA even has more concerns and more fee, they adding fuel to that fire. Um, so so Microsoft and Phil Spencer are going to have to decide one of two things. They either, you know, they either stick with what they've said, which is three years ex, or three, not exclusively, three years of extra contract agreement on top of what is already there. Or they decide that they they can't trust that they're going to get this through and then they're going to have to they're going to have to bow to pressure and they're going to have to say well we'll give you 10 or we'll we'll promise it'll always be or whatever they got to do they they're going to have to do one of those two things um and i guarantee you that they have the lawyers right now looking at it and and also what this does not only not only do they have to worry about about well, can they get it through? The lawyers might say, "Yeah, we'll get it through," but if we go to an investigation stage, you can kiss your fast tracked, you know, for a large acquisition, fast tracked acquisition, uh, goodbye. So you know, maybe if you're lucky, you'll hit that June date. You might be into September 2023 at this point. If we're gonna have to go through an investigation, so yeah. And mm-hmm. I've got a big feeling that Xbox are gonna want to slow down. I yeah. feel they're probably gonna sit. And go, okay, what do we need to do? What do we need to say? Um, right. you know, what what's in everybody's best interest? How can we work with you? Because we obviously we we don't want this to have any bad taste with anybody. So and for me also, if this gets passed in the UK, I can see it being a floodgate for lots of other people because we moan about everything. We moan when it rains, we moan when it's sunny, we moan that our Queens died, we moan that we want to get rid well, of that's kind of something Johnson you can and... moan about okay i mean i mean the queen die thing i mean i mean that's a pretty big thing i mean we'll, we'll give you a pass on that but at 96 it's expected to happen so it shouldn't be a big shock but anyway um we moaned about boris johnson we wanted to get rid of him so we get Liz trust and then we moan about Liz trust because we can't trust trust um we just we're we're a nation of moaning people and we're known for it <laughs> so if we pass this i have a small feeling that like Europe will come quite quickly behind it. So yes, I I um I do agree that if that if this gets passed um if this gets passed by the UK, it will it will I agree with you 100% what you said. Um it might stop at the US it might stop at the US shores because you know we, we also like to be nitpicky um and depending on who's all in office and wants to make this a big deal and thinks they can gain some voters out of it. We'll see there. Um, so, but yeah, I do, I do agree with what you're saying. Um, it is, it'll be interesting to see. This is the first real road bump that they hit. And obviously Jim and Sony is, are trying to take full advantage of it to try to get something extra out of this deal for them as best they can. Um, which by the way, you know, they bought Bungie. Now I know they've said, that they plan to keep it platform. Um, uh, they plan to keep it on all platforms, but you know, have they promised Xbox that they're going to do that? Have they, have they give, have they promised 10 years or given them a contract that says they'll always be able to have destiny? I'm just saying, you know? Um, but anyways, that's acquisition watch. That's also the Jim Ryan crying in his beer top story for the, for the week. Um, on to better news, Xbox controller news. Sean is going to get himself an Elite Series 2 specially designed controller, right? Yes. Are you, are you really, you really going to do it? Yeah, 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 definitely. I literally, I said to, I said to Lindsay this evening, if my parents ask me, ask her what I would like for Christmas, this is high up on my list. I'm assuming it's going to be coming this, the, the, the holiday period. So 
Yeah. I'm excited to see how much of a customization customization you could do because obviously mm-hmm. like with your with your Game Pass news controller, you could change the color of the buttons, the bumpers, the D pad, everything. You could like do everything. For the pictures that we've seen, you can just customize the color of the main body. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it's better than that. Um, I mean, the regular controllers are even more customizable now than when I got I got mine in the design labs like like first beginnings. I went out there. Oh, when we did the revamp of uh, Game Pass News, I went out there just to see what I could get and play around. And yeah, I mean, they there's a lot more you could do than what than what I was able to do when when Design Labs first dropped. It's such a cool service. Um, also, uh, they have dropped. They what they've done is they've they've they haven't dropped the price of the Elite Two, but they've added a SKU which doesn't have all the add-ons. Um, and the uh, and that skew for the elite two is I why can't I oh one hundred and fourteen dollars uh, or one hundred and fourteen Sean bucks or one hundred and twenty nine dollars uh, Nick bucks so that that would be I'm sorry that would be one hundred and fourteen pounds or one hundred and twenty nine U S dollars but as I call them Sean bucks so there you go. Um, yeah. And it's they've lowered. I have a feeling they've lowered the price of the original Elite Two because they've had the Elite Two car series coming out, which allows you to go even further. You can like you can adapt it in different ways. They've got the adjustment for controller sensitivity or how much the the analog stick actually moves or how stiff it is to move. I think. Yeah, um, and you so, you actually get that with the core series. Mm-hmm. Not with the current Elite Two, you get that with the, the car series. Oh, okay. Which is, which is the whole new controller. So you we're getting the customizable Elite Two, and then we're getting the like it's like a two point five, if you want to call it anything. Mm-hmm. I believe there were two different videos that came out. So yeah, the new video. So. You have the Elite Wireless Controller Series 2 and the Elite Wireless Controller Series 2 Core. If you get the Elite Wireless Control Series 2, you get the full pack. Like, you get the charging dock, and you get a set of four paddles, and you get additional thumbsticks, and the additional D-pad, and a carrying case for all the stuff. If you get the—and that is—that's the normal price— if you get just the Elite Wireless Controller Series 2 Core, you only get a thumbstick adjustment tool and a USB-C cable. But you can buy the add-on pack for $59 USD. So if you want to get the Series 2 Core and then later pick up everything else, you can do that. But all in, you're at $190, which I believe is more expensive than the Elite Wireless Series 2 by itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you see, um, I I'd, I'd need the paddles. I like I even playing Disney Dream. Like I use the paddles. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. I'm lazy. I don't like to move my thumb too much. <laughs> yeah. See, and that's exactly I could... what I was gonna say. I have no need for this. Like I don't play games. I don't play games where I need anything like this. Ah uh, no. If if I could get a a Nintendo pro controller with the paddles then i'd be all over that my mario kart game would be immense <laughs> you need to get you get the power a and you can get the buttons on the back if you start using uh, one of the power a controllers yeah the power a's have two um programmable buttons on the back i have my my animal crossing one has that um i Ooh. actually i actually do use it for uh when i was playing knockout city that was the one like competitive game where um, to run, I hated pushing down on the thumbstick to run in Knockout City. So I would, I would use this. I, I uh, programmed the one of the back buttons to be a, the push down of the thumbstick, so that I could run that way. It was much nicer. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's cool. It's not, it's not for me. Although I am kind of thinking about. Um, I have a, I have a pair of Zelda Joy Cons which I have never opened up. I am kind of thinking about selling those. And uh, 
and possibly uh, getting a new Design Labs controller. That that's on my that's on my possible to do list. So, <clears throat> I mean the the rubber grips. I'm gonna hold my Elite. Excuse me, the Elite Series One. The rubber grips are kind mm-hmm. of like I've had to super glue the right hand side down because mm-hmm. um, it started to lift up. And now the left hand side is starting to do it, starting to peel up slightly on the rubber, which is a known flaw for them. Um, yeah. Originally, Microsoft were really good that if you complained and sent your controller back, they would send you a whole new one. Um, but I think mine's well outside that window of being replaced. So, gotcha. Because I, I know my dad went through two Elite Series One controllers. Um, he's now got the Series Two, and he absolutely loves it. So. Yeah, I was going to say, is it manufactured better? Because I, I have heard that they had some manufacturing issues with those control with those controllers. Yeah, I, I I think it's just the glue underneath. After a while of obviously holding it in your hand for long periods of time, your hands mm-hmm. get warm, sweaty. The moisture and the heat kind of dissolves the glue a little bit. Yeah, so it starts to to peel and rise up. Um, I mean, I've had that controller for I'm going to say five years. Quite easy, yeah, easy about five years. So, yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Um, all right. Um, the next thing we got on here is Fable. Uh, Xbox's Matt Booty is excited to show the new Fable game. I just wanted to say his name. Uh, I don't know what this is trying to tell me to do. Uh, part of my job, that's right. Part of my job is giving air cover to the team, uh, the Fable team, which is Playground Studios. They don't want to show stuff early before it's ready to go. But if there is one game where that is kind of flipped around, where every time I see something and I say, we should show this. It's Fable because there's a lot of cool stuff. The team has made it very clear that I'm not going to be able to show anything until it's ready. Playground, just Playground, just what I'll say is that the craft and dedication that they brought to Forza Horizon, every bit of that is going to be applied to Fable, and they get it. Let's be honest. Giving Fable to the racing team could be a little bit of a head-scratcher, but they have proven that they get it, and I'm excited for when the time comes. If this is even if this is even half true, Sean, if Forza puts even half of the care and dedication into this world that they put into Mexico, I, I am yeah. <laughs> above the moon excited to see what they will do, like to see what comes out and see what happens. Um, not even yeah. not even the, the effort that they put into Mexico, the effort they put into the Hot Wheels update. Mm-hmm. Because that must have took a lot of planning, getting the the road and like all the track and everything to seamlessly blend together so you could power around that thing as fast as you could with all the additional things of all the dragons and stuff like that, the waterfalls, the different track styles, like the different biomes that you've got to go that you can drive through. If they put, like you say, half of that like power and force and dedication into the details of fable we are going to be given a very very nice game when we yep. get given it <laughs> yep no yep. but you know what when out of out of all the games that we have covered first party style for microsoft forza horizon was one of the few that dropped and was there and was ready you know like you look at halo you look at a lot of microsoft games and they come in pieces which seems to be a thing you know, it's the same way you're seeing that same kind of thing on Nintendo side of stuff, too, where it's dropped and it's like, well, yeah, we're going to be an update and an update and an update and an update. And you're like, well, that's because they don't have the whole game. here. But man, when Forza Horizon dropped, you really felt like, yeah, this is it. Like we got the whole game. Um, I mean, sure, there were the updates, but they were planned updates. What they wanted to drop was there. And I I appreciated that. And if, if we got to wait until... 2024 then i will wait until 2024 to see fable um come to come to the xbox uh the newest generation xbox and i will be excited to play it i hope i hope what he's saying is true i cannot tell you yeah. much. i also like that the as great as the stuff that he's seen and being the uh the, the lead behind it um I like the fact that the playground games are showing their integrity and saying, look, no, we're not happy with it. Don't show this. We've got more to do. We want to, we want, we, we, we understand that we've got a group of people or a, a set of fans that know how good we are as a team, as a developer as a, and stuff like that. So we, the only way we want you to show this kind of stuff is if it's ready to just go. Yep. So I like the fact that they're keeping to their integrity and they're not being pressured into to 
to show us something that isn't a finished anywhere near finished or be you know incomplete and they're not happy with so i like that i like that a lot yeah 100 percent um new ui uh is showing off by xbox not going to be available until 2023 man it looks really good i i like i like it looks a lot cleaner than uh than what than what they currently got out there and so i can't wait to see how that is they are they are actually trying to have people look at it uh i would imagine x insiders and uh get some get some feedback and make it a little bit better but uh early 2023 uh, it should be ready if you want to take a look at it. You can see it on our, I posted it on our Twitter page, um, the picture that they sent out. Um, yeah, I like the live icons. Um, mm-hmm. I like how what you said in the Discord as well, but it is very much um, like the Switch where the icons are bigger and you can, looks like you should be able to swipe through them, but then you also got the sub menus again underneath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really looks like a mashup of what they currently have and what the Switch has. And, uh, Kind of like it. I'm down for it. Um, so 2023, new UI for Xbox. Uh, Game Pass headlines uh, out this week. Disney Dreamlight Valley. We'll cover that a little bit more uh, in what we've been playing. Uh, Opus Magnum, a PC only game. And then Train Sim World 3 uh, console and PC out this week, out now. Um, haven't played Opus Magnum, obviously PC, and I haven't played Train Sim World yet either. So, uh, uh, like I said, we'll cover Disney Dreamlight Valley here in a little bit, in a bit. Um, Gun Gray, uh, new, new Game Pass games announced. So these are games that we want to, we want you to know that were announced. They won't be out soon, but, or some, some of them may be, but we just want you to know they're out there. Uh, Gun Grave Gore is launching day and date on uh on game pass on 11 22 so you can look forward to that one uh in november um games out coming next week uh we have on september 13th we have ashes of singularity that is a um that is a pc only game so uh and then we have or what did I miss? Oh, DC League Super Pets. Good game for the kiddos. Out on everything, console, cloud, and PC. Uh, 914. Sean's looking forward to this. You suck at parking. And that is out <laughs> also on console, cloud, and PC. You know what that? That almost looks like Fall Guys with cars. Did you yep. did you see that how many people? It's like a huge multiplayer mode in that. Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's got the whole moving out kind of feel to it. Plus, like you say... The Royal Rumbles esque from yeah. Fall Guys with hilarious animations and really bad packing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That that is a hundred percent. And then the uh, the Despots game, which is coming out on September fifteenth on cloud and PC. Uh, this is a roguelike tactics that's... army battler. Yeah, I was going to say that's the one that's um, with like futuristic style robot battlers. Mm-hmm, yeah equip your equip your team and sacrifice them through procedural dungeons is what it says so there you go and metal hellsinger are you interested in this at all uh, i haven't looked at it because i haven't had time to look at the the games that are coming out other than you took a packing which i think i saw that as a as a advertisement video on a different youtube video i was watching um I haven't had time to look at any of those in great depth. So, gotcha. So, Metal Hellsinger is a rhythm-based slag. It's like Doom meets a rhythm game. So, the the <laughs> more you fire your gun, it's a first-person shooter. The more you fire your gun, uh, at, this, on the this was rhythm, a Gamescom, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, the more you fire your gun on the rhythm of the song. Um, then some, the more damage you do or some, it helps you in some way. So, but it's all metal music. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's definitely not for me. I mean, I don't <laughs> like the, the, the first person demony devil shooty games and I'm not a fan of rhythm games. So this is like, this is as far away from my bucket as you can get. But for those of you who like that kind of stuff, it looks pretty cool. I mean, yeah. See, I liked I, I like rhythm games. I've played 
Parappa the Rapper, Guitar Heroes, um, DJ Hero. Um, oh. Neo Prime 33, Timothy, the Nintendo Dad himself, has subscribed. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate uh, your support. Um, so, yeah, as I was saying, so Parappa the Rapper, which was like original PlayStation 1 era, which was a ribbon based game where you played a weird looking dog in baggy trousers and a hat. Um, to Guitar Hero, DJ Hero, Rock Band, I played all those games to absolute doom and depth. And then there was one on the DS um, that you had to like, you had to tap the stylus on the screen to stuff and flick it. I enjoyed that. So riffing games, I really like. Demon Tron- shooting, first person demon shooting games, yeah. I really like. Yeah. So I should try this. I should. Yeah, try you it. should. This sounds like it was, I was, was going to say, I was waiting for the Doom shoe to drop because that's basically what it is. It's like Doom in a rhythm game. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, this should I mean, definitely when I, be. When right I play right. Doom, I like to try and kill the demons to the beat of Mick Gordon's soundtrack for the game. So yeah. Oh my goodness. Then yeah, this game should be yours. Well, Tim says he's trying to get one of uh, our Grand Hunter pins. Uh, Well, Tim, keep your eyes peeled and your ears open because we have an announcement coming next week for the next Achievement Hunter game. Um, So yeah, so that's what's coming out next week. Um... I think I'm gonna le- I think I'm gonna skip these. We've been going for a bit. This Callista protocol. What do you, what, do you want me to? Yeah, we, these are things that we might hit next week. Yeah, they, they kind of all merge together around the same subject. So that could be next week's topic. Yeah, about. I I like that idea because we've got a game a developer basically saying that it's difficult to make games for Game Pass. We've got a game that's st- cancelled its Game Pass launch, uh, but then also Game Pass high up in the revenue of a game so yeah it's, it's just good and and they came out boom 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 it was so funny you know one was like oh well game pass can't work for games it just doesn't happen and and the other and then it kind of started to lump in because it was and it would then paradox canceled their game and then hitman developers like if it wasn't for game pass we wouldn't be here and you're just like oh my gosh it's so it's just so funny um but we'll cover yeah. it more next week we have a lot um games leaving uh september 15th and sean this has me on the clock baby on the clock um yeah. spirit <laughs> you are hammering playtale like nobody's business yeah 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 elite dangerous which is i guess i didn't really know what it was but a lot of people were sad to see it go uh no i got the wrong i don't have the right list sean i have i have august 31st list oh no i messed up i messed up sean <laughs> Oh no, yeah. I'm currently looking at the same list thinking, uh oh. Yeah. Um well there's games leaving and one of them is Plague Tale, and it's leaving September fifteenth, and that's a problem for me, because I need to play it before the next one. Are you looking it up too? Yep. I am. Yeah, <laughs> um but <laughs> so so uh Plague Tale has sixteen chapters. I am eight chapters deep currently into it, and I have seven more days to beat it. And they last about thirty minutes to an hour, and I'm, I'm, and I, so I'm, man, I, I gotta, I gotta keep my, my rate of chapter yeah. per day to go. What do you got, Sean? I was trying so to vamp. So we've got a play, Tale Innocence, which is what you're currently <laughs> playing. Like there's no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aragami 2, Bug Fables, The Everlasting Sapling, Craftopia, Final Fantasy 13, Flynn, Son of Crimson, I Am Fish, like, you know, who hasn't played the fish in a ball? That's a fun um, game. Lost Woods, it is. Lost Woods Beyond the Page, Mighty Goose, one that I'm really upset about, Skatebird. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and the Artful Escape are all leaving September 15th, which is a big, big yeah. chunk of games to be leaving on mm-hmm. one day. That's crazy. Um, yeah, a lot of loved, a lot of beloved games there for sure. And you know, um, the only game that's not beloved on there, and I guarantee you, it's not just leaving Game Pass, but we probably won't ever see it again. That is Craftopia, or as I like <laughs> to call it, Craptopia. Listen, I don't hate. I, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that game, and it was to be fair. Full disclaimer, it was in game preview. It said that. 
But Sean, there was a, I mean, it's literally like they made this world and then they just left it open. It's like they made it in Game Builder Garage. There you go. That's what I'm going to say. It's like they went on Nintendo and they made it in Game Builder Garage and they were like, you can craft stuff. We'll call it Craftopia and we'll throw it on Game Pass. Um, I That game is not coming back. It's gone. That's, that's what I said. Um, so yeah, that's leaving and that puts me in a pickle because I need to beat Plague Tale because I don't want to buy it. <clears throat> Just to let you know. No. And so... And, and you want to play it and finish it before the second one comes out mm-hmm. because you're excited for the second one. Yes, so. yes. And I, I got... So I got to get through it, Sean. Like I said, I am eight chapters... No, I'm on the seventh chapter. Oh, man, I got so much work to do, Sean. Oh, it's going to be tough. <laughs> um, and Stop sitting up until 1 a.m. in the morning and crafting fish for Goofy. And <laughs> play some Plague Tale, man. Oh, I know. I got you. Um, so, anyways, uh, I'll, I'll talk more about it in a second. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. But uh, they th- those games are leaving. What are our new games with gold games? So, Double Kick Heroes, which we watched in last week's Game Pass News Showcase. Um, so, we, we've talked all about that one. My, the absolute thing that's got me super excited, and like this is where, for me, Games of Gold has kind of hit a high point, is we're going to get Portal 2. That game is currently worth $15.99. Um, I am so super super excited for that i've 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 kind of like looked at it and gone i really want to play it but i don't want to spend 15.99 this game's going to get cheaper soon um and then i saw the the uh, the little screenshot for this that they had on the xbox wire website and i was like yes my happiness has come true um so yeah part two that comes september 30th and it's only there i think 10 or 15 days so mark it on your calendar and go and claim this game for free because i mean you can go and spend like, how much was the double pack for the nintendo switch it was like 30 dollars, wasn't it uh was it that much oh is that what i paid was... for it? i don't know I can't, I can't remember i can look it up you just keep talking about it so yeah i, I... oh you know what it's gonna tell me because i stupid Stupid thing, it's gonna tell me you own this. Watch. Yep. Oh no, it does say that, but it does say the t- it's it's twenty bucks. Twenty. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so that's not that's too not bad. Too bad. Yeah. But yeah, the, the like Paul, I think is still on Game Pass. So to get Portal Two as well at the same time, super excited. Great game, hilarious, funny. The characters in it are great. So. Yeah, I I have enjoyed my time with it. Um. I don't love it, but it's definitely a fun game. Uh, well, I mean, I do know what I want to say. I don't know. I, I like the game. I, I don't I don't love it as much as many as some people do. Um, so but yeah. Um, all right. The Xbox Spotlight. What have we been playing? Have you been playing, Nick? <laughs> I keep forgetting that, that that my advanced scene switcher does not work anymore. Um, all right. Uh, we'll jump. Why don't we just kind of piggyback off each other on these first two? And then uh, and then we can roll for what we have not been playing together. Okay, um, cool. So I, f- I finished Tinykin literally within five days of it coming, in, coming to Game Pass. I finished it. Um, I couldn't give you a true representation of my my game time with it because I think I left the Xbox switched on one night, went to bed, mm. and then came to it the next day and I'd been playing it for 48 hours. <laughs> um, it's a so long game. I reckon, yeah, I reckon it's taken me about six to eight hours to finish. And I have enjoyed that game. I enjoyed it a lot. But I reckon they could make DLC for that and I would pay for it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that game is a joy. Uh, so for for those of you who don't know what it is, Tinykin is a Pikmin-like game, but it has more. But think of in in a in a in a Paper Mario two D style, um, with with a decent bit of platforming thrown in. Um, but what I will what I will applaud for this game 
over and over is the fact that they took the cumbersomeness, and it's probably not a word, the cumbersomeness of of the Pikmin game mechanics. So I don't have to worry about sorting Pikmin, about throwing the wrong Pikmin. When I point at something, the game automatically loads the Pikmin up, the tiny kin, they're not Pikmin, the tiny kin up that I need. And those are the ones that get tossed. And that makes it so much fun. I just get to have fun, throw my tiny kin, solve the puzzles, not worry about who's where, what what do I, you know, is that, do I have the right ones? Do I not? Am I throwing the wrong ones? But, oh man, I can't tell you. And the, and the platforming is is crisp. It's great. I, I adore this game. It's great. So without giving any spoilers away, how far into it have you got? Oh, not at all. I, I am playing it with, <laughs> um, I'm well, and here's why. Here's why. I'm playing it with the kiddos. This is the first game my kiddos played on the Xbox. Um, and so I, I started playing it. Now I'm probably gonna leave them in the. I'm gonna leave them because they they like the game, but. Or maybe I'll play the beginning of every level with them. But like once you get to the ender parts where you got to start jumping and, and hitting specific platforms and using the bubble a lot because it has a it has a bubble mechanic. Uh, where you can jump and get in a bubble and move uh, further. They get frustrated because they just like they're just not precise enough with the platforming. And so like that, that's that's kind of frustrating. But I love it. And so I'm probably going to start just playing without them now. The the. The tiny kin thing is great, and it's not clumsy, which I think is the word you're looking for. Clumsy. Yeah, yeah, that's um, perfect. Was is great up until you have to use the tiny little blue electric conducting ones. Okay, but that then becomes frustrating because you you basically you have to make a circuit from a from an outlet socket. You use the little blue tiny kin, and you have to place them a certain distance apart. And you make basically a, a big circuit of them to get them to a wire or to a switch or something like that. If you chuck one down that's just a, like literally a centimeter too far away, you can't pick just that one up. Oh, uh, you got to call them all back. You, yeah. And when you get to having to place 40 odd of them <laughs> and you get to like number 38, 39, and you drop one um and you put it in the wrong place you have to call them all back again it gets really really frustrated mm, <laughs> so yeah that is the only that is the only time and that is very 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 late on in the game um where that you, you start to feel that um because okay. when you first get them it seems like you're only putting like maybe four or five or ten down at most it's like mm -hmm. when you get to the last level and you put in like 40 of them down and you make a mistake which i made that mistake more than once on that one puzzle um yeah but yeah, other than that the game from from end from end to end was fantastic mm -hmm. um it's a it's a great it's it. a great addition to game pass um i will say do they ever explain why what these little guys are these tiny kins they, they no not really okay they're, All right. just, they're just there <laughs> yeah they just are all right that's fine like uh you know me in story i always I, I'd rather know, but that's okay. I'm I'm willing to just uh, go along with it. Like they're, they're just, just like, well, these guys are just here. Yeah, they're just fellow inhabitants of the land. Basically, mm -hmm. is all you get told. And by the way, the land is just a house. Basically, you are like a shrunken little guy. And so, but the way that they 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 talk about these environments and uh, you know talk about going to new areas, it is. Um, it is it is great. Uh, Tim says it's on the. Oh, I did know it was on the Switch. I did not know it had a demo. Definitely play the demo. You'll fall in love with it. I, I guarantee you. If yeah. you have any love for Pikmin at all, if you play that demo, you will buy the game. I I don't understand why you wouldn't. It's it's the it's got it's the best parts of Pikmin with some really good platforming. Like yeah. you will and buy the there's game. There's a huge there, there's a there's there's small differences between the main game and the demo as well, Tim. So. Like, as I played the demo before the release of the main game, and there was a couple of changes to how you control uh, Milo, which is the main character, and the introduction video to the game. And the demo has no voiceover, where in the main game it does. So there is differences, um, but very, very minor. Don't change how the game works. But 
you will absolutely fall in love with the game. For sure. All right. Um, the next game. <laughs> I like. I'm looking at how long we've been going. And thinking... I know. I know. I'm sorry. We we have we have. I will try to make this quick. Listen, Disney Dreamlight Valley out on Xbox Game Pass as of Tuesday. Tuesday, I believe. Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I knew I streamed it someday. Um, man, I when this game showed, I was super interested. The more I learned about it, the more I was hesitant and I wasn't sure. But it came through. It delivered. It's good. It's really good. It's addicting. Yep. Oh my goodness. It's 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 a ton of Animal Crossing New Horizon with a dash of the Harvest Moon Stardew Valley series. And the questing you do with the with the Disney characters is fantastic. Um, I love that I don't feel overly burdened by the free to play, you know, kind of mechanic. And so let me back up the Disney Dream Life Valley. You're the you're just a person that basically gets sucked into a Disney world, a Disney environment, which is Dreamlight Valley. It's been wrecked. It used to be beautiful. Now it's been wrecked. You got to bring it back to life, helping a bunch of Disney's uh, fabled and beloved characters, basically. Um, and you yeah. you can garden, you can craft, you can buy a bunch of stuff from Scrooge McDuck. You can dress your character, build your house, uh, expand your house. Uh, if it doesn't sound like Animal Crossing already, it's Animal Crossing, my friends, and uh, it's in, but it's with a Disney skin, and they did a dang good job with it. Kudos to GameLoft. I I gotta tell you, I was so nervous that this was not gonna be a fun game, or that it was gonna be cumbersome with with free to play nonsense. And gal darn if it's not good. Uh, I don't know. What do you, what do you what do you say, Sean? Uh, I'm loving it. It's like it's. I think it's a it's. Uh, there is a lot of fun. Um, I'm just currently looking for a review now, and this, there is different currencies in the game, which mm -hmm. is that's that was the hardest thing to learn for me. I'm yep. currently looking at all those currencies now. Um, to be honest, I still don't understand what the star coins do. I, I to, so, so I will say that star coins are what you use to buy things like outfits, furniture, seeds from Goofy. Stuff like that. Oh, really? Huh. So, yeah. Have you helped Scrooge McDuck open his star? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you use the moon, you use the star coins, which are the things that you get just as you're getting rid of all the fawns and oh. things like that. Oh, you dig them up. So those are your... Okay, that's... Your, okay. So you... Uh, that's like the main currency that you have to trade for items in the game with other characters. So you can sell stuff to goofy you can buy stuff from goofy that's that one and then you have dreamlight dreamlight is the currency that you the stuff that you need to acquire yes to move further through the game so you need to get to get rid of the night farms i believe it's called mm -hmm. and then there is moon 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 what are they call that i'm just looking at and that's the paid currency so mm -hmm. moonstones is the yeah. paid currency mm -hmm. but you can you get a lot of that. Like I've just traded in a lot of Moonstone because you get it from just from playing the game. You get welcome packs into like into stuff it gives you a lot of Moonstones. Well, you but that's trade... because we're the starter packs, the standard pack, yeah. the standard founder. I don't know. It gets confusing. There, I mean, it it still is a free to play game, so there are confusing things in it, and there are, you know are ten currencies and blah 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 blah. But so yeah, so yeah. moonstones, moonstones is going to be your your paid currency. That's the the stuff that you have to pay f real money for to to get stuff in the game, and then you trade the moonstones for what look like tiny Pixar balls, is all I can call them. Um, and what those tiny little Disney Pixar balls get you is like all the cool different like skins. So I'm looking at it now and I can buy a Lightning McQueen bed. I can buy a Lightning McQueen racing jacket. You can get a little socks emoji, like emotive and stuff so you can design your own t-shirts with socks and stuff like that. On. Um, there's lots of stuff like that. And you can then use the tiny little Pixar balls to get more moonstones to buy more tiny little Pixar balls to buy more stuff. Okay, that's all true. But you don't have to really worry about any of that. And you can enjoy yeah. the questing and enjoy 
um the ra- raising the level of your you have to raise the level of your friendship with all the different disney characters and um it's just it's just a joy i i i'm i i love playing it i'm somewhat addicted to it i was up till 1 30 last night just kind of playing playing around and fishing with goofy and uh helping mickey <laughs> yeah, and the, the, the fishing talking to remy yes yeah Yes, it did. So that was the one that took a little bit of kind of figuring out for me, but I soon got there. So, so if I was gonna, if I was going to gripe, my gripes would be laying furniture. Um, it's cumbersome and it needs to be fixed. Uh, when I try to spin the, cam- it says I'm supposed to spin the camera. When I spin the camera, holding the ZL button, which why I have to do that, I have no idea. When I do that, it it always pans me out. And it is, uh, it's very annoying. So um, they need to fix dropping furniture and the tutorials, which you're talking about, like the tutorial for fishing. Uh, I didn't get the tutorial for fishing until I learned the hard way because I, I didn't, I didn't trigger it correctly. So they need to work on, on how tutorials trigger for you so that you, you're sure to get them before you've gone through the rough job of figuring out how to do it by by yourself um yeah. which yeah. did take some time yes it did uh you can you can see it on our stream i i struggled to figure out how to uh, catch a fish um and after i figured it out then the tutorial the tutorial came through um so so yeah but i mean other than that i i just i don't know i'm just it it's it's right up my alley and i i am loving it uh, I haven't been able to show it to the kiddos yet, but I can't wait to to do so. To be honest, um, yeah, I I liked it that much and described it as Animal Crossing, but with Disney to Emily, and she wanted me to try and get it on a Switch. To then I realized that I can't quite get it on the Switch yet. Yeah, you have to play for the, you'd have to pay for the standard pack to get it on the Switch. Yeah, so which is I believe thirty dollars if I'm correct. Um, that so, is correct. Yeah, which is yeah. which is more than i kind of wanted to be paying today for so yeah i get i get that i do this is where i'm going going back to the beginning of the podcast where i was talking about the family plan and this game coming out this mm-hmm. would have been perfect because yeah i'd have just signed up for the family plan today and let everybody play it yep i 100 percent agree um yeah it would make make life a lot easier all right man uh why don't you finish off the two games that you've been playing and then i'll do the two games that i've been playing um so I've got three. I kind of forgot to, to mention. The, it's not on the list. doesn't count. Sorry. On. Nope. Mm-mm. Can I have them? I don't care. Oh, yeah, go ahead, go. Right. So I, I tried Grid Legends. I played a little bit of it. Um, if you want a broken down version of Forza Horizon to play, <laughs> um, get play this game. It's, it's not horrific, but it's not as well polished. So going from Forza Horizon to Grid Legends was a massive step down graphically and it doesn't control as well it just yeah grid legends so. if you want to use um sean's sean's review of your game as a box quote we won't even charge you okay all right <laughs> sean yeah. Abbott, you can, you if you want a broken down version here you go <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's yeah it is it's just it's fair it, no no we, it's fair it's just funny i I don't understand the, if the developer has approached Game Pass and gone, can you put our game on there? And Game Pass have kind of looked at it and gone, but we've got Forza Horizon. Why? why it's not going to be worth anything. I can't understand how this has happened. So, but yeah, I, I didn't you. enjoy it. Not for, not for long. Um, and then that's it for Xbox games. I've been trying to complete some of my backlog. So I've gone back to Luigi's Mansion 3, to which I realized I deleted my save. So... <sighs> I'm having to slug through that. I've just got through the... I'm into the basement two, so I'm like down into the guy, the hillbilly guy, Ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a that's yeah, a joyful to... game. That's another one of those games that's just a joy to play. <laughs> it is. I enjoy it. And mm-hmm. like, no, no, Logan seriously. loves it. So... But yeah, that's about it. Other than having getting beaten at Mario Kart, I'm no longer in the monthly mayhem. Oh, that is a bummer. But most importantly, Sean, most (laughs) importantly, we keep our winning streak with the Dads After Dark crew. 
which by the way, we should just kind of like, you know, make this episode for them. Um, it, the number fits. Um, I'll stop there. Um, we do keep our winning streak with the dads after dark crew, because before you lost, you did beat drew. So I did. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you I didn't just, I, it wasn't like a, a little bit of beat. I, I came first in every <laughs> race against him. Which is like, what let me rub me. this in. So, Hoots did that to me. So yeah, congratulations, Hoots. Go go tackle Dylan. Dillian, sorry, Mr. Dillian Andrews, the bane of my life for the last six weeks of <laughs> Mr. Mario Dillweed. <laughs> Just kidding, Dillian. We love you. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that's it. There I've been playing. All right. Um for me, I played uh so I'm I'm playing Plague Tale on the clock. Um but that game that game is so good. I can't wait. You know, they they make it sound like she, in the in the release of the new game in the trailer, he talked like, well, now he she, she can actually fight and blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you, this girl does a lot of fighting with that sling. I was expecting it to really just be all stealth, but she she takes out quite a few enemies um, with that sling. Um, but anyways, uh, the game is great. Adding you with your brother. You know, it's one thing if it's just me that that screws up but when i when i tell my brother to do something and then i don't i don't do the right thing and he gets caught and i have to watch him like they do just like the first part of the like they're coming down with the sword on him it it's always like i'm sorry i'm sorry buddy sorry hugo i didn't mean to mess up you know um yeah i don't know it's just it's so good the voiceover is fantastic um it's got such a great story i'm totally sucked in uh for sure for sure i i i know i'm late to the party <laughs> i feel like i say that every time i'm playing game pass games i know i'm late i didn't play it in time um but yeah uh and you only have uh seven more days if you want to play it on game pass so get to it <laughs> new game comes out in october um the next game I played, Immortality. Sean, I don't know what the hell this thing is. I don't even. It's a. It's a. <laughs> it's a San Paolo game. It's a. It's a full motion video. You can click on visual elements, which takes you to other clips. And I just kept clicking on crap. And I. I mean, I. 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 Um. And for a while, it was kind of satisfying because it was like, okay, you'd go to another clip and you'd unlock clips. Well, all of a sudden, like. Now I'm just going to clips I've already seen. Like I, I, I'm trying to figure out how to get to new clips, but there doesn't seem to be a real rhyme or reason. Like I can go back to the clip I was just at, click on the same visual element, and it takes me to a different clip. And that's when I got really confused because it's like, well, how do I know? Like, is this just luck that I'm going to be sent to the right clip? I, I don't understand. I don't really get it. And I was clicking on a bunch of stuff. I, I won't lie. I even looked up a thing about like about like how to get to the finish of this game. And I guess to really get to the finish, you have to unlock all the clips. I don't want to do that. Um, and so I just put it down. <laughs> uh, and actually, I was I was somewhat addicted to like just finding all the clips. But then uh, but then I'm not going to lie. I, I read the article that said that Plague Tale was and I was like, nope, I'm, like, I'm done. <laughs> here i come plague tale um because i was actually gonna start it but i thought no i'll try immortality first um so yeah i i played that i don't know if just it's like not like if sam barlow games are not for me in general or if it's just this one um but this one i don't know isn't really for me that's all i can say all right we have uh we have questions we do we have Follow questions, which is nice. That's because somebody actually remembered to uh, to make a video and ask for questions this week. You know, something I haven't done for a while. <laughs> that's the handsome UK man. That's who decided to do that. That's that's who got that done. Not not me. He's all like, he's all like, hey, we got to do this. I'm like, okay, and then he did it just like that. Boom. All right, what are our questions? So, question number one from Mr. Zablank, John from The Dads After Dark. What's your favorite Disney and or Pixar animated movie? For me, Tangled is my all-time number one, which really surprised me. Although Encanto is really, really close. For Pixar, the recent Lightyear movie is easily my favorite. Incredible looking, hilarious, and I love the way it tied into the rest of the universe. Hmm. I can easily go into this one. Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph is by far my favorite Disney animated movie. I like the reference to all the old games, Cuba, Sonic's in there. 
uh, Tapper, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. Um, and then for Pixar, Monsters, Inc. Um, easy. Uh, up. Uh, I, did, I didn't do just Pixar or Disney, but but for Disney, um, uh, I love, I love the, uh, and I know it's probably going to be like a wild, like who, uh, the Robin Hood movie with the fox yep i absolutely love that movie i yep i don't even know why i like it so much but i do um i i Robin yeah. and little john walking through the forest <laughs> yeah yeah i just i just absolutely love it um i will say i do um recency bias probably in play uh in kanto is is just great like i just i just really really like that that movie a lot um, so, yep. but, but I, if I had to pick an all time favorite, it, one, I could just sit down and watch all the time. It would be Robin Hood. So. Definitely. I do agree with you on that one. The, though the song gets stuck in your head and it gets stuck mm. in your head for a while. So. Yeah, it does. Um, his next question is what are your thoughts on the basic Xbox series SX controller? Is it cozy? What would you do to improve? Uh, and what color or design are you currently maining? So I don't like the the Series X controller that came with the console. I think it's this is going to sound really silly. I think it's too light and it's too plastic. <laughs> hmm. So mm-hmm. I like my I like the rubberized grips on the the Elite Series controller. I like the weight to it, uh, and I like having the adaptive buttons on the back. Now I'm excited for the design labs for the Elite Two. If I can really customize it and get it in all different cool colors, I'm going to be happy with that because previous that you could basically get it in black. Mm-hmm. So. Um, my two issues <clears throat> with the Xbox controller are one, I think the joysticks are too close together. Um, if uh, if you look at the I, immediately when I when I bought my S and I grabbed that controller, my thumbs were so close in the middle it just didn't it didn't feel you wanted, right you wanted them to be up here like with the switch yeah yeah it just the, the switch pro controller is the same no it's the same but if you look at it the the sticks are just a little bit farther apart i also don't like i also don't like that they want you to press the the three line the, the three lines and the two box button i don't know what you want to call these things um and they're like right over where the joysticks are so you always got to kind of move your hand to the right. To get, and maybe, I don't know, maybe I have little baby hands. But, like, I got to either lift my thumbs up or move it over. It's not my favorite controller, is my point. It's just not. Uh, I think I think the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is is a better controller than the S. No, I do not have the fancy Elite. Um, so, so, yeah, it's just, it's just not my favorite. Um, it's not bad. It's not... But I do agree it's a little lightweight, but for what, yeah, those are just like, and they're nitpicky things. I mean, it's, it's a fine controller, but it's definitely, I definitely prefer the Nintendo Switch one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say the only thing I think I could change with the Elite is probably just being able to customize the colors. I, I, I like the ergonomics. Um, I've never really thought about the sticks being too close together until you mentioned it. And now I'm looking at it thinking that's really freaking annoying that you pointed out. <laughs> 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 but yeah um so yeah open the, I, I just changed the colors I, I love i like the usability of the, the pedals on the back i like the weight i like the rubberized grips so. mm-hmm. yeah i do so new the design lab now has rubberized grips for the for um their regular controllers um you pay i think you pay an extra nine bucks for them or something like that but when i was when i was putting one together i i had i was like yep i'm doing rubberized grips for this one so so yeah uh, Mr. Timothy Olf, our uh, subscriber for this episode. Um, are you still wanting or hoping for a Nintendo and Microsoft collaboration on a game like the rumored Goldeye, GoldenEye game or something else? Or do you care anymore? Um, I would love there to be a collaboration just because I think it's cool when when the company, when those two collaborate, as long as Sony's not involved. Yeah, nobody wants. I'm to, nobody wants to <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, 
I'm so many salty that <laughs> this episode. Um, uh, and no, I, you know, I, I think it would be, I think it would be great to have a golden eye or something like that, or, or something with rare throwback. Um, do I really care? Like, to be honest, it would be more like, oh, that's awesome. I'm so glad they've done that. I think that's neat. Would I play it? Maybe for a hot second. Probably wouldn't finish it. And so, no, what? it's not high on my list. What I'd like to see is maybe in the multiverse game that everybody's playing, I'd like to see like a Nintendo character appear in that. Well, that would be well, but that's not really Xbox. That's uh, oh, WB, right? Is that Warner Brothers? Yeah, no, but it's yeah, yeah but it's a hum for me. It's it's a nice little nod to Nintendo being able to collab with games that are across all the platforms rather fair than enough. just Smash yeah. Bros. So yeah, fair enough um yeah that uh that would be yeah that would be cool um yeah yeah that's that's the problem it's a novel idea i think it's fun but it's not it's not something where i'm like oh this is what i really really want yeah yeah um and then mr justin uh our top our grand hunter from the last Achievement Hunter, uh, yes. also Mr. Ninja Lunchbox. I haven't played Halo Infinite in a few weeks, and this yapping event is pretty cool. It does offer some of the free cosmetics for playing, with the reveal of the robot recent with the real with the reveal of the robot recent. I'm kind of excited for the November eighth update that brings us Forge. Um, he wants to know: Are we going to be playing it? I am. I am not. I, I am so I am so out on Halo Infinite. I mean, I feel bad saying that. In fact, I am so out on Halo Infinite that we have chatted about finding someone to bring in when something like this happens so that they can chat about Halo Infinite and we can ask them questions and they can and they can kind of be our informants or correspondents or something. Because, uh, yeah, I'm just I just don't care. I beat the game. I thought the game was great. I but I don't care about the multiplayer and Halo's not, and Microsoft isn't giving me any reason to care. Um, Tim, I, we are glad to answer your question whenever. We we are honored to have a question from you. You have a great night, sir. I hope you have a wonderful podcast and uh, rock it. Um, yeah, I just, I just don't, I just don't, I just don't care. And Xbox hasn't given me enough reason. So, so in your answer, there, what you're saying is we currently have a vacancy for what we call the Game Pass News Correspondent. That's right. So we have a vacancy for the Halo Infinite Correspondent for the Game Pass News Show um, because because we don't care about this game. At least I don't. I don't know. Speak for yourself. I don't want to speak for you. Um, no. I currently seem to have a very big disliking for first-person shooters. Like I keep trying to jump back into Warzone, and I just keep getting really frustrated with it. Um, so I think I could be out for those for a while. Unless there's a new Doom, and then that might change. But for now, first person shooters, it's just, I, I don't know. I kind of, I think I might have burnt myself out on them a little bit. Yeah, that, I'm all about the, the pulling up fawns and helping Mickey and Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is currently sat in front of me on, I'm literally watching my character kind of stand there and bob around. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's it for me. You, you never even, did you ever beat the campaign? No, I no? think I did the first Spire and then that was like, mm. I've got more of these to do. This is repetitive. It was a bit <laughs> repetitive, but it was good. It was good old Halo shooting fun. And I, and I do enjoy the campaign. Um, I, I would love to see some, some DLC drop in campaign, even if it's paid, if it was a good chunk like you know, I mean, I wouldn't pay a ton, but you know, nine ninety nine or something like that. Um, I'd go yeah. back to the DLC if I could finish it with you. Well, can't we? Is an online co op going? I, I don't think co op campaigns there yet. I think that was one of the things we were moaning about a few weeks back. I thought couch co op was done, but I thought online co op was now available. See, oh. this is why we need this is why we need somebody who can actually tell us what the hell we're doing. <laughs> yeah, this game just I I mean it's such it's such a what do you want to say? A cornerstone game for Xbox. And it just they effed it 18th, up so eight, bad. 18th of July they dropped the beta, which allowed four people to co-op. Okay, yeah. I knew there was something. So that like was that. just a 
That was just a beta. Well, everything Microsoft does is a beta for like five. I mean, I mean, cloud gaming still a beta. <laughs> just, yeah, it's true. It's very, very true. <laughs> they don't oh, believe in man. doing everything to, to, to for Game Pass was probably a bit beta until like late twenty seventeen. <laughs> Uh, it's great yeah see see i can be salty to microsoft too it doesn't matter <laughs> just let me go i'll be salty to it all um yeah yeah there you go that's our that's our answer non-answer just i'm sorry we had a horrible answer to your question justin you deserved a you deserved a better answer but that's all we got yeah we do have a horrible question but if you are really interested in the game and you've got a lot to say about it get in touch with us send us some dms slide into our dms and uh let us know when you, you, you're available or when you've played it and you've got some stuff to say, and we will happily have you on the show and talk about it. Yeah. Because be great. We, need, we need it. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Yeah. I think, I, I believe that is everything. Yeah. Why don't we uh, just chat a little bit about uh, about the new plans with uh, the showcase so that they know what's going on? Yeah. So the game pass news showcase we we've kind of decided that we are going to continue to make that video it's going to go out but we're going to do it as a standalone drop um on youtube uh nick's worked really nice on some little pop-ups that can come up in the video during his work over there um so that's just going to drop once a week um as a standalone video we're not going to run through as much as we enjoy doing it um the, sometimes the technical difficulties behind it mean that it, it makes it difficult and we don't like giving you guys really poor content so we're going to drop that as a, like it's as a standalone video every week so keep your eyes peeled on twitter uh we'll let you guys into this kind of discord know about it um so yeah yep all right send us out man cool um oh oh we had a we had a twitter we, we had a twitter question a late question or a question that I didn't see when I was looking for all the questions. I'm going. But maybe not fast enough. There too. I'm just waiting for my internet to kind of do. Uh, Teleka, when or if you call of Call of Duty game comes to Game Pass, which title will you download first? The oh, one. I did see that one. I just, that was literally. Yeah, sorry. I shot straight down the notifications to find the ones that uh, replied to the tweet and missed that completely. So sorry, Mr. TK. Um, I'm going to go straight for Modern Warfare Remastered. Um, I am going to ask Sean. Sean, I haven't played Call of Duty in a long time and I only want to play campaign games. Which one should I play first? That's what I'm going to do. And Sean's going to answer. Modern Warfare Remastered. Modern Death Warfare Street. Remastered. There you go. Because yeah, <laughs> that's literally that. where go, I'm at. Go play um, Gun House because it's one of the best like um, hostage style situation uh, simulators I have ever tried. Um, the story, because I know how much you like campaigns, the, mm -hmm. the campaign behind that is one of the best of the series. Cool. Um, so yeah. Yep. yep. So that's, that's what I will do as well because I, I just want the campaign and uh yeah i'm excited i'm i'd be pumped for whatever they give me um yeah all right sorry we missed your question there tk yeah so if you want to reach to us reach out to us guys and talk to us you can do that by heading to over our social media pages that's youtube twitter or twitch and they're all at game pass news if you want to jump in on the discord you can head over to patreon.com backslash nintendo dads and for as little as a dollar a month you can subscribe there to them and that gets you in our subscribe to our Twitch channel and we'll figure out how to get you access there. If you want some of the cool merchandise like the clock there behind Nick or like the jumper that he likes to wear while we're podcasting, um, head over to redbubble.com, look for our star, Game Pass News, um, and buy yourself a sweet piece of merchandise. And thanks to AcidTK03, HChad, Neo Prime, and... Uh... That's it. All those people for jumping in in the live chat. Thanks very much, guys. And until next time, we shall see you later. See you later, guys.